I'm on a five month trip with carry on luggage only. And this is my personal item. Let's unpack this baby. When you fly, you can bring two bags, even if you're flying with carry-on only. One is your carry-on luggage or suitcase. That goes in the overhead bin. This is what most people refer to when they talk about carry-on bags. But you can also bring along a second bag called a personal item, which needs to fit underneath the seat in front of you. Although most airlines go on to describe this as a small purse or laptop bag, it can be a whole lot bigger than that. On my channel, I've reviewed a few personal item bags and carry-on bags for travel, and I will definitely be doing some more reviews like that in the future. So please do subscribe to my channel if that kind of stuff interests you. Today, I am going through what to pack in your personal item on a plane. These are carry-on essentials that you will want with you at all times, so you can relax even if the airline forces you to check your carry-on luggage and then misplaces it. <laughs> Not like that would ever happen, right? <laughs> In this episode, I will probably end up referring to your personal item as a carry-on bag, which is not to be confused with your carry-on luggage or a carry-on suitcase, for which I have already created other episodes that you can refer to, and there are relevant links in the description for that. Today, I am going through exactly what I pack in my personal item bag that goes under the seat in front of me on planes. So, first up in terms of what to pack in your carry-on bag, I'm a big fan of having backups of stuff and backups of the backups. This way, no matter what your travels throw at you, and <laughs> trust me, a lot of stuff can happen that you just cannot plan for, at least you will always be covered. And the sort of backups I'm talking about here are backup paperwork and printouts. Because if you have everything on your phone and it stops working, or it runs out of battery, or it's lost or stolen, you're gonna want that piece of paper. Not to be too dramatic, but in some cases, your life could depend on it. Now, when I travel full time, there's a whole lot more that I carry with me in terms of paperwork versus when I have a home base and I'm just traveling on shorter trips. And by shorter, I still mean anything up to like a year. If you're planning a life of full time digital nomad style travel, then check the description for a link to a free email course that I designed to help you plan out this lifestyle and start out on the right foot. It covers all the foundational basics to help you implement the lifestyle of your dreams and avoid a lot of the mistakes that I made when I started out as a full-time traveler 17 years ago. In terms of the paperwork that you need for a trip that you're at least eventually coming back from, here is what I suggest that you have on hand in your personal item bag. One, at least one photocopy of your passport. I carry this photocopy with me at all times and when I'm at my destination, I lock up my physical passport. Two my travel insurance information. Although you can print out your ID card that the travel insurance company provides you, I tend to just write the info that's on the card on my passport copy. This includes the name of the insurance company, the policy number, and the phone number to call when you have an emergency. Honestly, those are the bare bones and all that I really care about having with me in terms of paperwork backups. But in some cases, it's wise to also have a printout of your travel itinerary, especially if you're on a complicated trip with a lot of moving parts. Also, it's important to note, if you're entering a country that requires you to show proof of accommodation or proof of onward travel, it's much easier to have this printed out so you can hand that over for inspection. You can just keep it on your phone, which I have been known to do, but if there's no Wi-Fi and you don't have global data, you might not be able to access it. By the way, I do have another episode on how to use your cell phone abroad and get global data and such, so do be sure to check that out. In reality though, I am not a big fan of handing my phone over to an immigration agent to inspect anyway, so it is good to have those paperwork printouts. Next up, what goes hand in hand with papers? Pens. I always have at least one pen on me, usually a couple one in my laptop bag, and one in the bag or wallet that holds my passport, which in this case happens to be this bag. On my last overseas flight from Europe to the United States, there was a lineup to get inside the boarding gate itself. While standing in line, I was handed a form that I had to fill out and sign. The number of people in line who did not have pens and actually had to step out of line to borrow or even buy a pen was a lot. Don't be one of those people, have a pen. Next up in terms of carry-on essentials is anything that I can't afford to lose or can't easily replace. Now this is different for everybody. And for me, this makes up the majority of what I have in my personal item bag. This includes my laptop, my laptop stand, 
my Bluetooth mouse pad and keyboard, various adapters and charge cords, which I keep in this handy little pouch, tools for filming videos and doing remote interviews like microphones, collapsible tripods, portable lights, in both cases, which I'm using right now to film this video. And just in case the things that you can't afford to lose don't include electronics, I'll say it here, pack your electronics into your personal carry-on bag. Not only is this important because from a security perspective, you'll want your electronics close at hand, but also if you're checking a bag, you actually can't pack anything with a lithium battery into your checked bags. This has something to do with spontaneous combustion and the dangers of something catching fire in the cargo hold, where it's hard for flight staff to access and put out the fire. There are a few additional electronics I like to have with me on my flight that help me pass the time. These include wireless earbuds, and I made a video about why I love these ones in particular. I'm personally not a fan of noise canceling headphones, but some people swear by them. So if that's you, go for it. You'll just need some extra space in your carry-on bag for them because they're kind of big. But I also like to have a pair of good old fashioned earbuds with a cord which I can plug into some onboard entertainment systems to watch movies. So I don't need to use the ones that they provide, which are kind of wasteful and never good quality if you're in economy. By the way, this thing, super cool. Uh, I will put a link to it in the description, but it's a great way to store your earbuds. And of course, I always like to have an e-reader with me as well. These things I've just mentioned are not only electronics that you don't wanna lose, but they're also really handy to have with you on your flight. Here are a few more things that will make your flight experience more comfortable. For me, this category definitely includes an extra layer of clothing because it can get cold on planes. And it's hit or miss as to whether or not your flight will have blankets on board. I've even been on long haul flights that don't provide blankets anymore and others that charge extra for the blanket, which, <laughs> This, by the way, is a merino wool hoodie that has some cool features that make it especially handy for travel. You can learn more about this in the description. Some people also like to have items like an eye mask and earplugs with them. I tend not to, but they're not bad to have if you wanna catch some shut eye on your flight. Now, I have a little pouch of miscellaneous goodies that I like to have on the flight and at my destination for that matter. In this bag, I have a variety of little things. Extra tissues, always good. A uh, towelette that I can use to wipe down my uh, seat area. So I tend to wipe down the armrests and the tray table and things that just do not get fully cleaned and desanitized between flights. Trust me on this one. <laughs> Lip balm, hand lotion, sanitizer, of course. Uh, I also have a power bank. So something that I can use to recharge my uh, phone or other electronics. Uh, specifically my phone, really, in, in case the battery gets low. Um, I have a little bit, this is actually a brush-on powder sunscreen that is really nice to have uh, at the destination for my face. Uh, and I have this little thing here of meds. Uh, and what this is, is this is just over-the-counter painkillers, allergy meds, anything that I might need at some stage of the game at my destination. And it's a lot more space saving to carry it this way than it is to carry actual bottles of meds. So this is always my, like, my emergency med kit. So that's what I keep in this little bag. Okay, there are a few more things yet that go into my personal item bag. One is a reusable water bottle. Because I'm a big fan of ultralight travel in general, my water bottle of choice is this puppy. It literally rolls up into nothing, but it's also made in such a way that when it's full of water, it stands up on its own. It also has a screw top bottle top that's compatible with things like the SteriPen UV water purifier, which is handy for treating water if you're in countries where the water isn't drinkable. Of course, I go through security with the bottle empty, and then I fill it up at a fountain on the other side of security. This saves me the terrible cost and waste of buying bottled water. Many airports also have special fountains now that are designed for filling water bottles, which I think is absolutely fabulous. And of course, it's also really important to keep any prescription medications with you close at hand and in your personal bag. But beyond those, I also like to have that little emergency over-the-counter kit, uh, which I do keep in this little bag. Uh, it's super important. Flights are really dry and sometimes on long flights I can get a headache. So I really like to keep them handy just in case. Also, hot tip here, courtesy of a friend who's a flight attendant, I have 
nasal decongestant spray with me. I was describing to my friend one day how I have a lot of trouble clearing my ears when the plane descends, and sometimes it can be really painful. And he told me a shot of nasal decongestant spray at the start of the flight can mitigate this problem. It doesn't totally fix the situation, but it does seem to help. Now there's a few more things in here. One is, ah yes, my supplements that I actually don't carry in bottles. I tend to carry in Ziploc bags. Uh, these don't have to go in my personal item bag. They can go in my carry-on as well, but in this particular case, they're in here. Uh, I also have, oh, this is an electronic. Love this. This is a Bluetooth speaker uh, and it is rugged and it just helps improve my quality of life at my destination. I can always listen to music or podcasts uh, with really good sound quality. And what else do we have? Oh, collapsible coffee cup. This helps me save the waste of uh, buying, when I buy coffee, I don't have to buy it in paper cups anymore. I can hand them my collapsible coffee cup uh, and I can sometimes actually get a discount as well for using that. All right, my bag is almost empty, but there's a few more things. I got a pair of sunglasses. These are, <laughs> these are my sunglasses. They're super, super uh, lightweight and compact. Uh, I like to have a snack just in case there isn't something readily available. E extra face mask is always a good idea, although uh, really I need these less and less, which is not a bad thing. And just in case I need it, an extra TSA lock. Mm, pretty much it. Last up is something that frankly, I'm a bit lazy about, but some of my professional travel colleagues tend to swear by, and that is to pack a change of clothes into your carry-on personal item bag. This is especially important when you're checking luggage so that you have something to get you by for an extra day or two in case your luggage is lost. And the strategy still stands even when you're traveling with carry-on luggage only because sometimes you have to check your carry-on and if that happens, it can get misplaced. For me personally, because I tend to have a slightly smaller personal item bag like this one, and because I put so many electronics and recording gear in it, I don't really have space for a change of clothes. And since I tend to travel with carry-on luggage only these days, admittedly, it's less of an issue. Okay, I showed you mine. What's in your bag? Is there anything you put into your personal item bag that you swear by? Let us know in the comments. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA The Professional Hobo, and I will catch you next time.